Uh, welcome to the Whiskey Vault. I'm Rex. I'm Daniel. Uh, rye. We're doing a Colorado rye. Yeah. Don't read too much into it the way I said that. You know what? I, like, I don't hate rye. Okay, we're drinking a gift whiskey mm. from Will Schleifer. Will Schleifer, you magnificent bastard. And I'm layering down one layer. Yeah, man, I'm telling you, we apparently don't have control over the heat in the vault. Is that it? We can kick on the air conditioner and have the air conditioner and the heat Fighting. fight it out. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Starting at 2018 out with some drama. So this is a rye whiskey. Now, there's a reason it's got a dog tag. Oh, wow, this is really labeled with everything. Oh, there's handwritten. Um, what does it say? So this is 10th Mountain Rye Whiskey. Now, why do you know 10th Mountain Whiskey and Spirits? Or 10th Mountain, you ever heard the term 10th Mountain? It's a military term. Yes. Because it's named after an actual mountain. Um, military. Light Infantry Division. Infantry Division. That was trained in New York. New York. York. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, this is back to World War II, Two. Two, I think. Uh, 1943 was when they first showed up. I, I had a 50 And they were trained specifically as a mountain light infantry unit. Ooh. They were badasses. They got sent to Italy and stuck in the most crazy terrain fighting. Very similar to like uh, what Afghanistan seems to look like it looks like to me. Um, anyway, they got... Uh, cool. This After was... World War II, they were shut down, then they were brought back again, right. and then reactivated in 1985, and now they've been in every major conflict, but they're specifically a mountain-trained light infantry. Okay, so what um, is this rye have to do with that military division group history, um, other than... My guess is they probably have some connection to the light infantry. Okay. But uh, they're also just saying it's the spirit. They're in Vail, Colorado. Man, they call I... themselves Colorado's premier whiskey distillery. <laughs> That's kind of ballsy. Well, I mean, we are going to call ourselves the world's oldest and best whiskey distillery. Yeah, I, I'm trying to trademark that. And biggest. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, bigamist? <laughs> <laughs> the what? world's oldest and biggest and best tasting whiskey distillery. In the world. In the world. And we'll say in the world at the end. Yeah, after the, the, world's, the biggest world's biggest in, in the, the world. world. <laughs> <laughs> really, Whoa, this is interesting. Yeah, I really like the nose on this. Rye, which those who watch the show often know that rye isn't... I don't hate it, it's just not the thing that excites me the most. But this is... Yeah. This is uh, unique. Let's say that the bouquet of the nose is wide-ranging and just, vibrant. You're being redundant, just say the bouquet. The bouquet is wide ranging and redundant. Or just say the nose. You sound like less of a. <laughs> Even though the nose is still pretty. D yeah, the nose on this is yeah. really good. It, it smells real good. Yes. Yeah, it smells real good. You like the smell. It smells smell. like things. <laughs> what um, does it smell like, though? This, uh, I can't this, figure. It's there's not something. A it's not a typical rye. There's something that's more acetone alcohol nail polish y, but not as harsh. Yeah, not and as harsh. And it's lending itself to this weird sweetness. That I can't pinpoint. So I want to say I'm getting more of a barrel note on the nose of this rye than I do on pretty much any other rye. Yeah, it does smell like a dusty old wooden chair. Yeah. And but it's too sharp and sparkly for that. I'm getting a it's little not bit dull. I'm getting a little bit of that rye spice on the nose. There is no black licorice. There's no anise. Yeah, it's buried in the actual wood flavor. It's dusty wood. Wow. Sweet, I like that. Sweet dusty wood. How is this rye? This is six months old. This is only six months old. And it's not spicy. The spice that I was getting on the nose does not show up on And it's the, not sour. It doesn't show up on the taste. Yeah. It's sweet, dusty wood. Dude, this is maybe one of the smoothest ryes I've ever tried. Yeah, smooth, almost to the point where you're kind of you're kind of bracing yourself for a bit more of a hit, and it's not there. It's like, oh, is that... Yeah, because the nose makes you prepare, like, mm, this is going to be right. punchy. And then uh, it, it's rounded. It's a rounded off. 95% rye. Yeah. If I'm in the mood for wood, I'd suck that down. <laughs> John Gardner. I, it just, the sentence just passed my brain fog while I was reading. Problem? All of a sudden became clear on exactly what you just said. It tastes like wood. And what would you do with that? Sip on it. <laughs> John Gardner, hey guys, weird question for you. Have you ever pondered where you were in life when the whiskey you're drinking was being distilled? For example, I received a bottle of Lagavulin 16 for Christmas. 
best wife ever. Yeah. Uh, and it made me think. I was 11 or 12 years old, and in the 7th or 8th grade when this whiskey was being distilled, distilled 16 years ago in 2001 or 2002. Yes. Give or take a year that's been in the bottle. Too existential for this channel? No, we're very, no. We're very deep here. We're super existential. I go deep. Really. No, here's the thing. One of my favorite so, things to do in tastings is to talk about how old the whiskey is and try to get everybody in the room to think about where were you at this point in time. Like, uh, my favorite was... Um, so most of the whiskeys so, we're doing in tasting are 12 years old. Okay. So 12 years ago, what, what were you doing? What, what year is it? 2005? 2006? Two. Three. 2003? Two, wait, 2000. It was 2018. Yeah, 12 years ago. Two, oh, no, no, no. Wait, I'm doing my math wrong. It was 2006. Okay. Or seven. 2006 or seven, then... Let's uh, say six. Then we would be in... We would just have moved into our first house. Okay. Brandy and I moved out of our apartment. It was us, one bedroom apartment with our dog, mm. Triumph. Who died like two months ago? Yeah. It really sucked. To Triumph. He was such a bastard. <laughs> he was. Uh, the magnificence is questionable. Yeah, but... Giant bastard. Um, but we were moving into our first house, and then within the year, we're going to have Hollister, our mm. oldest. Uh, and yeah, then uh, that was one house ago. We're in a new house now. So if you can imagine that someone put whiskey into a barrel that moment, and then you're just now tasting it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's pretty amazing. Sure. Through all the things that happened in life between now and then. Uh, for me, I had just gotten married, and we were living in a a condo in Shell Beach, California, mm -hmm. and we were only about a year out from having Jackson. We were in similar places in our life. Yeah, right. very similar. Uh, this gets a little dull for me. The more I drink it, it was interesting. The novelty of it being a weird rye. Not anise, not spicy, not bitey, not hot. It's a dusty, sweet wood, and the more I drink this, it may be the 43%. I would love to have this at like 50%. Mm and see what the notes are like then, but it feels a little too... Uh, this round. is super drinkable. This starts to get to the level of like a blended scotch where you can drink it without thinking. Yeah, it turns into a background whiskey for me mm. to where it, it, if but, I'm wanting something man, interesting can you that I can focus on... They got a whiskey that friendly and that wood rich Yeah, at six months? Well, and it's in the fact that it's a rye and you're getting these flavors. It's uh, I respect what it's doing as a rye. I wish it was a higher proof. I get that. Yeah. All right, we got Birdman 360 Rex grabbing a chair during Daniel's story time while halfway paying attention is secretly all of us. <laughs> it was like, what, two uh, weeks ago or something? You hit on my greatest fear, man, which is like, <laughs> my greatest fear is that I'm really, really excited about something and I'm getting into it. Like, oh, there's all these things. And people are and just humoring Around you. the room, everyone's just doing this. <laughs> They're humoring you. They're smiling and nodding, but everyone's secretly thinking about like, are we, where are we going for dinner? So this is what you now, need. Now we ate there last. This is week. what you need to look for. If now, you see, oh, I, did I wash the? Oh, I forgot to move the clothes to the dryer. If you see stuff piled up in front of them, and they got their head tilted down, you can't see a smartphone because they're considerate. But if their face is lit, <laughs> yeah, you're boring. If that, yeah, like, no one. There's a community that said, look, if you're gonna use your phone, just get it out in front of you because let's just be honest. No one in real life looks at your crotch and smiles all the time. <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> obviously, you're on a phone. <laughs> Alex Hatfield, hey, can I get my girlfriend to appreciate me Alex. and buy me whiskey for holidays like Christmas? This is a bit late on the draw here, man. Yeah, we talked about this a long time in the comments, but the, the point was, Alex, if your girlfriend doesn't already buy you whiskeys and appreciate you, right. you're asking the wrong question, my friend. <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're obviously not being the right boyfriend. <laughs> and you obviously hadn't made it clear that whiskey is your thing. Because I will tell you, 95% of the people you love don't like trying to figure out what to give you for a gift. That's why I just don't. 95%, right? All of them, if you had given them an obvious out, where it's like they just know, well, what do we get that guy? Oh, well, he likes whiskey. Okay, thank God. Yeah. At least you'll get like a gift certificate to Total Wine or Specs, it's, you know? It's too drinkable. Yeah, we're just down in this thing. It's too drinkable. I, I like to try this in a cocktail. Because I like, oh, there the, there's the wood dust, there's the sweetness, there's a little bit of a dustiness, and then I'm forgetting about it again. Okay, 10th Mountain. It falls off. Invite quick. us to Vale so that we can try your whiskey right out of the cask. Yeah. Is that, that's your resolution. That's the 2018. To be more, more moochy. To be more moochy. No. Oh, no, got you're, a whiskey you're coming more, up. You're more generous. I'm more moochy, you're more generous. No, no, I want to be more moochy. I got another whiskey <laughs> coming up this week. We can't both be mooch. That I told Worlds you. Worlds collide. <laughs> 
I've got a whiskey coming up this week. I totally mooched. Oh yeah? yeah. Oh yeah, I did. See, and whenever you do these things, it's brutal, man. I know. <laughs> he doesn't. See, this is why I don't do rude humor. Is because when I do it, every once in a while, Rex and I'll be driving somewhere, and I'll make the comment to Rex that I thought about saying to the person, right. and Rex <laughs> like, will oh, go, God. "Oh, dude, <laughs> that was." Brutal. No, and, and I'm like, dude, this is why I don't joke. Daniel has no, like, on a scale from zero to ten, Daniel doesn't have levels two through nine. No, I really don't. It's either like, I don't know, joke at all and I either, just be nice. It's either nothing or you destroyed them. Yeah. What's wrong with you? I don't have middle ground. <laughs> Okay, so if you're looking for a rye <laughs> that is unique, it's not uh, black licorice, mm -hmm. it's not spicy and hot. Uh, it's pretty damn smooth, for lack of a better word. Mm -hmm. This is a good one. All right, here's to fighting, stealing, and drinking. If you fight, wait, wait, I don't want to curse everybody. Again. I have, I have. Oh, you don't have any. If you fight, may you fight for a friend. If you steal, may a steal lover's heart. If you drink, may you drink with us. Hey, thanks for hanging out with us in the whiskey vault. Don't forget to throw in a like, hit that subscribe button on the bottom right, and drop a question or comment down below.